people in the world. I know I'm from New York City, so my bar may be a little low, but seriously, everyone has been so great. It's been so nice to be here. I've had fun in this part of the country the last couple of weeks. I was doing some shows in your neighboring state, Nevada, in uh, Vegas. Yeah, and then I was up in Reno, which is the poor man's Vegas. <laughs> They have a very similar slogan. What happens in Reno, nobody gives a crap. <laughs> totally different vibe there. My buddy and I were uh, walking into a casino the other day, and there was a guy in front begging for money. He's like, hey, fellas, you think you could help me out a little bit, trying to get a little something to eat? If you could help me out, that'd be great. So I looked, and I said, let me ask you something. If I give you money right now, what's to say you're not just going to run into the casino and gamble it all away? And he looks at me and goes, oh, no, 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 I got gambling money. So it's one of those <laughs> interesting times. But the hotel was, was rough because they, they were renovating the hotel. It was empty. I felt like I was in The Shining at this place. And they had these guys doing construction, 8 o'clock every morning, all week. I didn't need an alarm clock, a wake-up call. Every day I was waking up to <laughs> So it's good to be in Provo. <laughs> Not to mention, when they were doing the construction, someone accidentally drilled into the power line. They knocked the power out for the whole hotel. Yeah, they had generators to the lights, but nothing else. So there was no phone, no internet, no television. It, I felt like I was one horse and buggy away from being legally Amish at this Macaca Hotel. And, uh, and the worst was I couldn't watch my, my late night TV. That was weird. I don't know about anyone else here. Are you guys like me that like, to, anyone here like to fall asleep with the TV on? Yeah. A few guys, see that's me. It was so weird watching late night TV in this hotel without cable. It was like watching late night TV, what, 30, 40 years ago? Remember the good old days you could put on any channel at two in the morning here? television. They need to bring that back. That's way better than some of the junk they're putting on now, right? <laughs> These crazy infomercials and stuff. I'll tell you though, I've learned that people have very different noise tolerance and stuff, usually based on where they're from. Like New Yorkers, we have a high noise tolerance. We get a lot of noise in here. My buddy was making fun of me when I was complaining to him about the construction of the hotel. Well, he lives in the city. He's got one of those apartments where it's right in front, where they have the elevated subway tracks going by. Yeah, you can't even have a conversation. Like, hey, dude, what's up? Not much, man. It's funny. I just got back... start working for the transit authority. It's the 2020s. We got robots on Mars. We're sending billionaires into space. Can we fix the PA in the subway is all I'm saying. <laughs> I think we need to get some more technological priorities together sometimes. Like, how's it possible, okay? Over 50 years ago, we had the technology. Back then, we were putting dudes up on the moon. Now think about that for a moment. The moon is 250,000 miles away in the middle of outer space. Yet somehow everyone on Earth had no problem hearing this man say, that's one small step for man. But somehow to this day on planet Earth, not even, what, two feet from any drive through is a... How's that possible? Is that, right? I didn't nap for that. It happened to me the other day. I pulled up and I was, you know, I was like... So you know what I do now when that happens to me, for real? I talk back to them the same exact way. I sit in the car. <laughs> because they don't even realize you're messing with them. They're like... <laughs> Fun at the drive-thru. You know what else we need to fix technology-wise are the cell phones. They've been out a while. They need to work a little better. My dad called me today. He's in New York, and he called me from his cell. And I always hate when my dad calls me from his cell. Because he's, you know, it's embarrassing having a dad in prison. And so, <laughs> he's trying to make sure you're paying attention. 
No, I hate when he calls me from uh, the cell because he's always in his car. And my dad's one of those guys who calls you from his car but then spends half the conversation yelling at traffic while you talk to him on the phone. He's, he's like, hey, Dad, what's up? Yeah, I stay. I'm in the car. Didn't he in? Up yours! <laughs> that is not you. This cab just cut me off. You see that, idiot? <laughs> I love when he asks me that brilliant question. Did you see that, idiot? Yeah, no, I didn't, Dad, but I think I have to go change my underwear now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've told him he can't call me from the car anymore. I've also told him he's not allowed to leave me messages from the car either. That's just as bad, because what I'm talking about with all the dropout zones, the signal cuts out and digitizes. He wonders why I don't return half his calls. Well, because he keeps leaving messages on my voicemail, like the <laughs> Yeah, see, but your father here. I'm in the car. I uh, just got to work. Up, 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 and later tonight. <laughs> so if there's any chance we... Up, 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 30 would be great. So can you give me a call? I'll be at 212. And it's not My dad's a character. My, my dad talks that way. Well, he doesn't talk that way. <laughs> That'd be weird. Like, hey, Stephen. It's like, uh, up and later. And like, That'd be creepy. Ooh, did I just do jazz hands in a comedy show? I think I did. <laughs> Keep that between us and the millions of people watching at home. No, I, um, my, uh, my dad's funny. My dad talks to me because uh, he, he, my dad's a newscaster back home. So he's a very deep, loud, authoritative broadcaster voice, which on TV is great, but at home, unnecessary. <laughs> I love the man in death, but he's no concept of how loud he is and that sound travels. And you know when it's bad is when you're a little kid and you do something wrong, you get in trouble, and you gotta get yelled at or scolded by someone who talks like that. It puts the fear of God into you. Oh yeah, especially with my dad, who by the way was king of the scolders. Like he would invent stuff to scold us about. Some of it didn't make sense. He actually once said this to me, hey, knock it off. You know, when I was your age, I was a lot older than you. <laughs> I think dad's been drinking. I don't mean a dry bar. <laughs> The worst though is if ever, if ever I was so bad that my mom would have to go call him up at work. I know we have some moms out there. You know when moms get fed up to the point that like, that's it, I'm calling your father. Those were the scariest words in the world to me. Yeah, because he was already in that newscaster frame of mind. So whenever I'd get yelled at, I always felt like I was a breaking story. Oh yeah, he'd pick up the phone in that newscaster cadence he didn't play. Like, ah, your father. Now your mother just told me what you did. Well, I'll tell you something, mister, you're in a lot of trouble. And you're gonna get it when I get home, tonight, at 11. <laughs> and no television for a week. And now, back to you, Joan. <laughs> my mom's funny, I have a whole separate message problem with my mom. My mom is adorable, she still does not understand the concept of voicemail. Every one of my mother's messages pretty much starts off like this. <laughs> Hi, sweetie, it's mom. Pick up the phone. <laughs> Sweetheart, are you there? It's me. I have a story for you. And then unlike most people, have you just call them back and then tell you the story? No. She leaves the entire story right on the voicemail. Which, and it's never important stuff. It's always like where she went shopping that day, or she'll leave me medical updates from distant family members I haven't even seen since I'm 12. You know, it makes me miss the good old days when we used to have answering machines, because then I could listen to her messages like this. Beep. Hi, sweetie, it's your mother. Remember me? I'm the woman who gave birth to you. It's been three days. I would like to know that you're still alive. Look at me, I'm sitting here and I'm reading through the obituary column. And would you believe I am not seeing your name any place? So I'm expecting a call. Love you. Beep. Yeah, see, but your father here, I'm in the car. Uh, your mother's calling. I take up, 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 up and where you are. So, up oars. Hi, sweetie. Guess who? I love guess who. Like, I have no idea. Sweetie, it's mom. Where are you? It's sister's birthday, and everyone's coming. I hope you'll be able to shopping yesterday, and I bought the most beautiful. 30%. I couldn't believe it. And the woman, because then Sylvia's stool sample came back from the lab. The doctor said he, when I was nine.
My mom's a character, but she's a good lady. I think we're gonna keep her. She, uh, <laughs> actually, she's adorable. My mom, uh, my mom has a boyfriend now, which is still a little weird for me because you know my parents are still married. But I uh, <laughs> just want to make sure you're paying attention. No, uh, but he's he's a big sports fan, and my mother knows nothing about sports. My whole life, this is the woman who would drive me to little league and say, "Okay, call me when you're done with baseball rehearsal." Like she had no idea. <laughs> She's one of those people who calls halftime intermission. You know what I'm talking about? She's just like, hey, I hope you hit a, hope you hit a touchdown. It's a home run, Mom. But again, so that's what we're dealing with here. Anyway, so he's a big sportsman, so she's trying to like pretend to like for his interest, but she still doesn't know stuff. So a couple weeks ago, I called. They were watching the, the Yankees game, and the Yankees were playing the Baltimore Orioles. And I called her and said, oh, hi, sweetie. It's good to hear from you. Listen, we can't talk right now. We're watching the Yankee game, but I thought you'd like to know that the Yankees are up Five to three over the Oreos. <laughs> Not the Orioles the bird, the Oreos the cookie. She thought that was the name of the team. I didn't have the heart to tell her. I was like, oh, that's great, Mom. I'm watching the Mets game. They're tied with the Fig Newtons, so I'm going to get back to that. But I can come over tomorrow and we can watch the Chips Ahoy Malamar game together. That'll be fun. So she's learning. I was just, uh, I was on a cruise recently. I don't know if you guys have had, oh, you've been on, so yeah, they're fun, right? They're good vacations. I, I was on the biggest one, the biggest ship in the world that had uh, over 6,000 passengers on it. Yeah, can you, and plus there's 2,000 crews, so really that's 8,000 people on one ship. Yeah, it really is like a floating city at sea. So if, you, know, you know when a ship may be getting a little too big? Is when it actually has a bad neighborhood. Okay, I think that's <laughs> maybe a good time to draw the line. <laughs> But it's amazing what they have on the ships now. Like if you went on a cruise vacation years ago, you had what, shuffleboard, ping pong, bingo, that was it. But today you go on ships, they have ice skating rinks on the ship, roller coasters, rock climbing, surfing, bowling. The one I was on had this giant street promenade down the middle, where they had like bars and stores on either side, and like homeless people laying around and stuff. And <laughs> traffic was awful, I couldn't get a cab all week. I think they went a little far when they put the Costco on board. Did we get that on a cruise ship? <laughs> Thought the Home Depot and Staples were enough, but that's just me. But it's fun, they're fun vacations. I like doing the more exotic ones. I'm a little jaded with some of the, like the Caribbean cruises. I, I don't know, if, I don't wanna ruin the illusion for those of you who go, but here's, here's my issue with the Caribbean cruise. You know when you go on a Caribbean cruise, you know how they take us around like all the different islands? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's only one island. <laughs> and at night they just take the ship around the other side and change the sign, I'm telling you. Right? You've been on these things. Everyone's like, wow, these parts are like the same. Bingo. Because <laughs> the cruise lines figure you're having too much fun or drinking too much to give a crap or realize they save gas money, everybody wins. <laughs> but if you don't believe me, next time you go on a Caribbean cruise, wake up early when the ship is pulling into port and you'll see them out there setting up the sign. They'll be like, oh, the people, no, get not to me. No, give me the Grand Cayman quickly. The people are coming. What's wrong with you? Welcome to Grand Cayman. <laughs> <laughs> Grand Cayman. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Jamaica was yesterday. You almost messed it up, stupid. <laughs> I confirmed it on my last cruise. I'm like, okay, wait a minute. What are the odds of me having the same cab driver in Grand Cayman that I had three days earlier in Jamaica? Is that possible? Something's fishy, I tell you. Something's fishy. But they're fun. Um, they're fun to. Uh, I like doing the more exotic cruises, though. Like uh, sometimes we go to ones that go to uh, go to Europe and stuff. Those are fun because you go up, you do the Baltic or you do the Med. The Baltic's fun because you usually go to like Amsterdam and, and we went, last time I went, we went to Belgium. That was nice. Those waffles are awesome. Uh, Brussels sprouts, not so much. They still suck. But they do have an interesting language that they speak in Belgium called Flemish. Now I was not aware this was a language, but I'm pretty certain my grandfather was fluent. Because all I ever heard the man say was <laughs> They made a language out of that in Belgium apparently. I wish I could have sent Granby Dave there. He would have made some new friends. He would have loved it. So yeah, you do that and you go up to Scandinavia and Russia. It's a nice cruise. But I like the uh, Mediterranean. It's fun too. Because the Mediterranean, you get to go to Spain, France, and Italy. I always love Italy. Italy is one of my favorites. It was weird the first time I ever went to Italy. I did not realize that apparently my New York City street Italian does not translate at all over there. <laughs> I didn't know. I'm walking around trying to talk to people going, hey, Paisan. <laughs> I don't want you jerking me around. <laughs> Gabish, they didn't know what the heck I was on. <laughs> See, apparently they never got the Sopranos in Italy, I found out. 
But speaking of which, parts of Italy still do have that very old school fabled mafioso feel going on. Because we took the ship down to Sicily. Sicily is like walking into the movie The Godfather. You step off the ship, you can even hear the music. It's like, There wasn't even a mandolin player anywhere in sight. <laughs> Turns out it was just some weird guy going. <laughs> we did France. We did Spain. I prepared for my trip to Spain. I bought this. Uh, I have this great uh, Spanish language app on the phone that's terrific. A lot better than what I had 20 something years ago. The first time I went, where all you had back then were those uh, CDs they used to pedal on late night TV. Oh yeah, if you ever stayed up watch network TV past one in the morning from like the mid to late 90s, you know the ones I'm talking about. They're called Amigos, and the way they teach you to speak Spanish, they have a really dorky sounding guy who gives you a word in English, then it's broken down for you phonetically and translated by the cool, suave, sophisticated sounding guy doing the same word in Spanish. So you listen to it, it's like, bank. Bungo. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> Discussion. <laughs> Public. <laughs> Publico. Like, what kind of nonsense is that? That might be helpful if people actually spoke Spanish that way. But if you travel to any one of the major Spanish-speaking countries, whether it be Spain, Mexico, Miami, you guys know. <laughs> They don't speak anything like that. You put on one of those channels we have, like Telemundo or whatever. You know, they speak like they're on speed at 300 miles an hour. To me, everything sounds like. Andres, the Telemundo, he's a record of Andres, the Andres, the Rayo. The record of Andres, the Andres, the Aki. The Andres, the Andres, the Andres, the Banco. Yo comprendo el banco. See, that's the best way to learn Spanish. You don't need the apps. Go to CDs, watch the Spanish channel for two, three weeks, you'll figure it out. Especially if you watch Spanish news, that's always the easiest to follow. Because it seems like they can never get through a sentence without saying something you know, that you will be able to recognize. You turn on, you'll see the newscast, like, Bueno, se sienta que su otro con sus obrizos contra candresos al presidente Joe Biden. It's like, oh, hey! I know what they're talking about, the press. Yeah, I understood, because I speak Spanish now. Uh, yeah, that's actually where I get all of my political news from, the Spanish channel. It is so much better when you don't understand it. Oh, was... <laughs> that's also the best uh, part about taking a cruise, is for one week, you get away from all the news, the politics, all the crazy. It's like the best vacation in the world, right? Yeah. The best time to take a cruise, the week before any election. Book it now, you will thank me. Early November, end of October, because you get away from all those annoying commercials. You guys don't have it quite as bad. I live in New York City, it's called the tri-state area. So when we have elections, we have to listen to three times the amount of annoying campaign commercials from candidates from New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. Here you just have Utah, you know the commercials I'm talking about. So they're silly, it's like, you know, in 1994, Mitt Romney had a love affair with a chihuahua. <laughs> Is this the kind of man you want as your center? This message sponsored by the people who love chihuahuas. <laughs> you see them, they're so stupid. <laughs> I'll tell you something, I'm surprised they don't enforce the same law for the campaign commercials that they do for the prescription medication commercials. Where halfway through, they have to include a disclaimer listing the side effects of all the crap that might go wrong if you vote for that candidate. Wouldn't that be so helpful? Instead of hearing, hi, I'm so-and-so and I approve this message, no, I'd rather hear, if you vote for this candidate, you may experience bouts of upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, rash, chills, fever, swelling of the tongue or throat, higher taxes, a deficit, depression, nightmares, thoughts of suicide, increased bowel movements, and urgent need to have them until they control them. If you have an election that lasts more than four hours, be sure to call your congressman immediately. That's what I'm talking about. We can do it. And while we're at it, we should revamp the entire electoral process, because it's, it's, it's basically become an 18-month reality show, right? And we have shows like that for chefs, comedians, bachelors, singers. Why can't we just do that for candidates for office, right? You want to schlep to the polls and mail-in ballots? 
You just get like Ryan Seacrest to host it, <laughs> throw in a Kardashian or two for good ratings, give it a schnazzy title like, you know, Presidential Idol or America's Got Candidates, you know? <laughs> Primaries would be so simple. Candidates would come out, they get two minutes to give a speech, and when they're done, they'd have to get critiqued and voted on by the panel of celebrity judges. How fun would that be to watch, yeah? It's simple. Like Bernie Sanders to come out, you get Chris Wallace from Fox News moderating. Senator Sanders is a Jewish person running for office if you're elected president. Would you continue the tradition of the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn? And then Bernie Sanders comes out and says, I, I, I am of course Jewish, Chris, but I have no religious objection to the Easter egg hunt on the White House lawn. I would, however, take objection that I am 78 years old and I do not like it when kids play on my lawn. <laughs> And as soon as he's finished, you'd have Simon Cowell saying, going, you know what I like about you, Bernie? You look like you belong in a nursing home talking to plants. <laughs> but you're quite brilliant. It's a yes for me, you're off to Washington. How fun would that be, right? So simple. And you mix in all the different reality show judges from week to week. Bring back that guy I always liked from Project Runway, Tim Gunn. Be like, now let's make it work, people. <laughs> or bring back Howard Stern. Yeah, he was a judge on EGT. How hilarious would he be on the show? Uh, let me tell you something, Bernie. You got like the hottest body. What are you, like a C-cup? <laughs> that was... <laughs> adding the Howard Stern fan. <laughs> you know, the, the best judge, in fact, the only person in the world who qualifies as a TV reality show judge and as a can of rubs would be Donald Trump, which means technically he'd be allowed to judge himself. How fun would that be to watch? We are going to make America so good again, folks. I promise you, I promise you, this guy's a loser, you're a disaster, you're a terrible person, nobody likes you, your mother dresses you funny. I could watch an hour that a week and be thoroughly entertained. <laughs> Quality TV program. My friend was, I was, I was doing, I was trying to do a Biden recently, and my friend's like, what's the, and I was like trying to find the hook because he's not as, you know, colorful as Trump. So I, I was watching a town hall, and I, I think I found, he was talking, I noticed whenever they ask him a question about something, maybe he doesn't know the answer or doesn't want to answer, he always turns it into some folksy story about his childhood growing up that may or may not have anything to do with the question they just asked him. But watch next time, they, they can ask him about like the vaccine, and they'll be like, look folks, here's the thing. I remember when I was a little boy, growing up in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> My grandpappy said something I never forgot. It was right before he kicked the bucket, he looked over at me, he said, hey, Joey, how far do you think I kicked this bucket? I never saw him again, get a vaccine. And that's my new joke, Biden, for you people. You guys are terrific. I, I'll, I'll leave you with this one last story. How many of you, um, uh, by round of applause, the kind of folks that absolutely positively have to listen to music in your cars whenever you drive? And a lot of you out there, yeah, see, I'm like that too. So I'm, I'm renting a car while I'm here, and uh, they gave me this car um, called a Kia. Are you guys familiar with that car, the Kia? I, yeah, I wasn't. I, he said, I thought he said Ikea, and I thought it was going to be a car I'd have to put together myself. So it made me nervous. So. Yeah, it was a Kia, Kia Carnival. Also a weird name for it. I think Carnival, I think, you know, a horrible ride where I'm nauseous and want to throw up all over the place, but that's just me. But anyway, so I had this Kia Carnival and, and uh, there was something wrong with the radio on it. And you, you, it, would, it would stick, you, you know, you, it, could, it would go through all the channels. You know, you, you know, you know how you have an annoying song stuck in your head, you just cannot get rid of? Imagine what's been running through my head after five days driving around Utah listening to this. Showers later this evening, right now temperatures in the mid-60s. Tomorrow clear skies for Road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Look at some fiddle 14 car back up right now on Route 80 heading westbound. Also driving on the 84. We got a 15, 215, the 70, because hey, it's Utah. We don't normally have traffic, but it's all being caused by some loser in a Kia Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> Banco. 
WKZY Radio. Steven, it's your mother. But a mage prince guest will only discharge increased bowel movement. And Donald Trump and I approve this measure. Blah. And he hits from D Star Field. He's back. He's under the ball, but he drops it because he plays for the Oreos. <laughs> 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 